Hey guys, welcome to the video where I am going to explain to you guys just how I've rendered my fantasy art reference piece for this month. So the program that I used is Clip Studio Paint and it is a once-off payment software that you can download. So it's not like Photoshop where you need to pay a monthly or a yearly fee. Um, at least with this you can just pay something once off, get the software and you've got it. And I think I paid around 150 Australian dollars for it, which isn't too bad. So the things that this program can do are crazy. There's a lot of things that it is capable of doing. You can create 3D models um, to... Uh, I haven't actually uploaded any of the 3D models, but you can create your 3D models and turn them into any posture that you like, change the perspective. Um, so it's mainly for those that are into digital design or comic book design. But what I, the purposes that I'm using it for is just to create a photo reference. So the, the reference that I created was this one, and I'll talk you through a little bit of the process on how I created this. So I took a couple of reference photos, so I found a nice photo with um, a background that I like that had an aurora um, and some nice snowy trees. I also looked for a couple of photos for, so I, I knew what I sort of wanted to do, like I knew that I wanted a snow leopard. I wanted to put a little innocent child that's sort of um, close to the snow leopard as if it feels safe with the snow leopard. And um, I also wanted to create a snow leopard that isn't really a snow leopard. So I thought I'd put some horns on its head to make it seem like it's a completely different creature. Um, what else? Oh, I didn't exactly have an idea in my mind. Like I sort of just put things together until I found something that I like. So I didn't expect to have an outcome like this and I don't think you ever do. But um, it is this is just what I ended up with. So the um, background is I, I took this image and the horns I got from this image. Um, I also collected a couple of images of kids that are sort of like standing close to their parents or if they had nice eyes and I sort of just wanted to get a couple of examples out there. So I ended up using this one. I liked her little dress and I also liked the book in her arms. So uh, I, I changed that one up a little so that it would fit. And then I sort of added different images to it. Um, to I created a, I added a different face to hers, I think. So um, if we look at this one, so there we go, that's the image that I used. I used a different child's face and I used a couple of pieces of hair. I think I used three different photos for the hair. And you can see I, I just took bits and pieces out of photos so I wasn't gonna purchase them or anything. So that one was a Shutterstock photo but I just took a small little piece of it. So I wasn't fussed about that. And yeah, I also put different feet over there because the little girl, the image that we used before she was wearing her mom's shoes. <laughs> so um, I wanted to make her barefoot. And I like this part with her head against the snow leopard. So um, yeah, so that's sort of the idea of what I had. So I, put, I got the snow leopard reference photo from wildlifereferences.com. And um, these other pictures, I just Googled them. I just took a bit, bits, of piece, uh, bits and pieces of pictures that I liked. Um, here's another one of a little girl hugging the leg of her mother. And so that, that's sort of the idea that I had in mind. Um, and then when I put them all together, it ended up looking like this. So I'll just show you a few little bits and pieces of what I did. So like with the background, all you have to do is you go file, import, and then you import the image and it will show up over here. And then what you can do is you will just move the image around how you like. So find the composition that you're interested in. So I knew that I wanted to use this part of the image. And what you have to do is when you import a new image, you have to rasterize it. 
um, so that you can manipulate the image. And then if you want to change the size, you just go edit, change, um, where is transform, scale up and down or free transform so you can scale it to different angles and stuff. So we want to scale it so that it fits sort of like that, something like that. And then, um, then we've got it there. And then you can just click somewhere on the edge of the screen and say, yes, apply transform. And then that's done. And then with a little girl, so let's say I want to remove the background off of this image. What you could do is you could use, I'm not, I'm not aware of the names of the tools and everything. So, um, it's just <laughs> something that you will have to, um, sort of figure out for yourself but yeah this there's a, a um these are marquee tools so i love using the selection pen and the erase selection so these are my two favorites so the selection pen is just a pen which you select an area like that and over here you can change the brush sizes so let's say i want to the area that i'm selecting now is just the area that I would like to remove. So I am selecting the area. And let's say that's that's what I want to remove. So I've selected it all. I'm just going to hide the background so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, so that area has been selected and then on the tools on the left you can do whatever you want to them. So if you wanted to make all of them one color, you could take an airbrush tool or the brush tool. Let's just take the airbrush tool as an example. Pick a color over here and then um, oh, to, if you, because you see that it's got the little circle with a red line through it. That's because we didn't rasterize it. Oh no, we did. Why is it doing that then? Mm, what if we do that? Oh, it's because I have the background highlighted. This is what we want here. So if I go layer, uh, rasterize, there we go. So if I wanted to make this all one color, I think, did I select the background in this? I'm not sure. So yeah, you could manipulate the areas in the back or you could take an eraser if you wanted to remove it. So that's usually what I use it for. So I select the area that I want. Mainly the selection pen is you just you're selecting an area to manipulate and then you can decide if you want to erase it, if you want to change the color, if you want to add texture, all those sorts of things. So that's the tool I use the most. And then if you really want to get into detail, you can scroll in closer with your mouse, press space bar to pan, and then you can use the selection pen again. Um, this one, selection pen, and then you can make it a lot smaller so if you can make it teeny tiny, whatever brush size you're looking for. So then you can really get into the real intricate parts of it if you really want to get fine details sort of outlined. And then um, you can erase them like that. So that's, that's how I sort of cut my images out to put them on top of the next image. So let's... Uh, leave it at that for now so now what I would like to do is I want to turn the image around so it's facing the other direction so what first I'm going to do is deselect selection so that it doesn't have those little um, ants running ants I think they call it running around and then I would like to edit uh, transform scale up and down or rotate and then I'm going to take this area and just move it across to that side so now she's facing the other direction so that's all I wanted to do there and then um, apply transform and there we
we have it. And then let's put the background back in. So we have her, she's in the background. We just want to move her a little bit lower like that. And then um, there we have it. Let's say, okay, we have the snow leopard image. I just took, she was at the bottom of that one. So I just grabbed the layer and placed it at the top so that she shows up at the top. But now I don't have the background that I want. So now I click on the snow leopard image on the right here. I go layer and rasterize so that I can edit it. And then what I would like to do is I'd like to remove this background because I want the other background. So you obviously you do this more carefully using your selection pen or your selection tool. Um, you can just press Control Z on the Mac to undo or there's an undo or redo arrow at the top here um, okay so that's the background that I want um, and then obviously you do you do this much much neater but the next thing that we want to do now is we want the colors in this image to balance out so to uh, let's move this a little bit lower so just grab that move it lower like that uh, yeah move it lower click on the layer of the little girl so that we can move her closer closer like that and then what we'd like to do is what what i usually do at this step after i've cut it all out nicely i would um duplicate them so once i'm happy with a layer i would duplicate the layer hide one layer so let's just do that for the snow leopard for instance i'm going to right click on the snow leopard layer then i'm going to go duplicate layer i'm going to hide the layer that i'm happy with and then i'm going to keep that layer then i'm going to do the same for the little girl duplicate layer hide one of them and then i want to i want to apply because i want to adjust the colors in here i would like to put these images together once the colors have been adjusted. So actually I need to do that afterwards. So I'm going to delete those layers and do that after I have adjusted the colors. So let's just bring those two back up. Okay, so I'm gonna, I want to create more greens and make this image a little bit darker of the snow leopard and for the little girl as well so that they match the background, the background colors. So clicking on the snow leopard layer I'm going to go edit, tonal correction, color balance. So there we have a few tones. So we got half tone, shadow or highlight. So you can color balance all of them. So usually I start off with the half tone one. And then I want that there needs to be more blues and greens. So I'm going to make it a little bit greener. Oh, that's blue. So make it a little bit bluer and also make it a little more green. And it's starting, it's already starting to look like it matches the background more. And then you can have a play. See, do you wanna add a little bit more cyan or if you wanna go a little bit more red? We don't wanna to go too red. We, wanna, we want those darker colors. So there we go. That's matching the colors of the background much more and I think I want the intensity of the blue to be up a bit more too. And then with the shadows, I'd like to increase the blue and the green. There we go. And then and maybe a little bit more of the cyan. Okay. So you can just fiddle around with them and see how much you would like to increase the colors. So now with the highlights, maybe we'd adjust the green a bit more. There we go. That's, that's really starting to look like it matches up with the background pretty good. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, you can preview it. So unclick this or click it. So there we can see it's way too red and way too bright. And that one, it merges in with the background. It looks like the sun is down or the sun is going down and it looks a bit more um, darker. Okay, so go preview. Then, yep, we're happy, so press okay. Next step, we want to do the same with the little girl. So click on the layer with the little girl, go edit, and then go tron the tonal correction, color balance, and we're going to do the same thing. So we wanna adjust the colors with the little girl. So that's the blue 
add a bit more green. A bit more of the cyan. Not too much. Okay, the shadow, we want to increase the blue. Yeah, that looks good. And do that. Maybe add a bit more red. There we go, I like that. So we can add a little bit more red because there's a bit of a red here behind her. We'd add a little bit of red like that. And then the highlights, we're okay to leave it like that. Okay, so let's say we've got all our colors right. We enjoy it. We like the colors just the way they are. Um, I'm just going to just tidy her up a little bit more so that her rough edges don't look so distracting. So I'm just going to use a soft eraser and I'm just going to erase some of these areas around here. So there we go. Just make her not look as cut out even though this is just to give you guys an example it's not to show you exactly how I've done the one done my one because I actually did that one before I knew I was gonna start doing fantasy art tutorials um, I didn't have it already plus that that took me a long time so um, this is just to give you an idea of what I did without it taking that much time. Okay, there we go. Okay. Yep, that, that's just to make it seem a little bit better. Um, Radio. so we've adjusted the colors. I think that, uh, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our layers so that we can merge these three images together. But we want to still have a spare copy of the background, a spare copy of the um, snow leopard and a spare copy of the little girl. So we will um, duplicate it. So right click on the layer and then go duplicate layer same for the snow leopard, duplicate layer, and same for the background, duplicate layer. And then just hide the extra one. And then these two layers I'd like to merge together. So I'm gonna click on that one. And then if you hover over here, it says transfer to lower layer. And then this one says combine to lower layer. So we wanna combine it to the lower layer. So click on that one. And then the spare copy of the background, we're going to place underneath there so that we can combine that one as well. And then now you will see that all three of those images are combined over there. So now we want to do some color adjustments or adjustments to the entire image together. So now you can go edit and you can go tonal correction and let's go brightness and contrast. So you can um, play a bit with the bright brightness. So we want this to be darker like that so that it's not too bright. So like that is too bright, that adds a little bit more to it. The contrast you can play around with, see how extreme you'd like the contrast. So that's got very little contrast. Um, we wanna add a little bit of contrast, not too much, just like that. So that's what we had before. This is what we have now. And I like that, that looks a bit better. What else do they have? You could go, um, you could try and balance the color out even more now that you have it with the background. So maybe add a bit more of the blue, add a bit of the red. That makes the reds a little bit more intense. That looks lovely. So that was a bit too green. And now that just adds a little bit more of those other colors in there as well. Okay, so that's sort of the idea that we had. So the final image ended up looking like this. Um, it looks quite bright on, you know, the reds are very intense. The greens are very intense. And um, yeah, so I you just play around with it. I increased the size of the eyes. I added the horns and I just added different I put her face against the chest of the snow leopard, which I preferred to the other little girl's face. 
um, looking backwards sort of um, I will probably I won't do the same cover on the book I'll probably put something else on the book but that's the general idea so that's what I do is I usually find different sort of um, images and place them together and just have a play around and see how much I um, like the composition of the image and how you know and that is how we change the colors so that the colors look like they fit a little bit better compared to having all the different colors of different lightings because they were images taken taken in different settings so i hope you guys enjoyed that the next video that's going to come up is going to be a live demonstration on the first few hours on drawing the actual fantasy reference piece so that will be there for you guys to check out um, I will put a I'll put this image up for you guys to have so you guys can have this and if you want you can change it up a little bit and see how you go but uh, this final image I'd like to keep for myself but you guys are, are happy I'm happy for you guys to go ahead with this image if you guys want to try and draw that and um, yeah so I give you full permission to draw this one but the real fantasy um, reference art piece I'd like to keep as copyright for myself um okie dokie so with this one you guys can decide if you maybe want to add some different horns or if you want to add a different background i'll give you the psd um yeah the psd file for this uh so you guys can add a few things if you'd like so you would be able to open this in photoshop or sketchbook pro so any program that has the ability to manipulate or add layers or to open a psd file you would be able to use this and you can have a play around in that so change the background up if you want um, change the composition have a play around and see what you guys can come up with so that you can make it nice and unique to yourself it's always nice um to to use the tools that other artists give you but to change it up so that it is yours that you make it purely yours and unique thank you guys for tuning in and i will see you guys when i do the live demonstration Bye.